So first of all, just want to check in and see how everything's going with with your camp coming up for this fight against Kai Kara France. Obviously, you have a lot more time than you did against your fight against Pantoja. So just curious how everything's going with that. Yeah, going well. Um, camp's always hard. So whether it's eight weeks, ten weeks, twelve weeks, whatever it is, it's going to be hard. And um, not feeling good, ready to go. Awesome. So of course, that was a, a pretty drastic step up for you in your career, going to Brazil, taking on the flyweight champion kind of how do you think you process that um knowing that it happened about four months ago and, and really what you think you learned from that fight um i learned that i am near the top of the division like i always believed it but even though i lost i think the fact that i was able to go five rounds i did get up um he didn't take my back i was able to land like there's a lot of good things that came out of it also obviously a lot of things that i did wrong or he did really well that I have to improve so that next time um, I get an opportunity like that, I can uh, I can go there not as a good effort, but as a world champion. So and that's probably the biggest things I learned. Definitely. And one of those things I believe you talked about kind of in the aftermath of the fight was allowing those two takedowns in round five, including one with about one minute left. Just how have you kind of applied that uh, as a lesson that you've learned and, and implemented in your training since, do you think? Um, I'm, I've heard a lot of people say I was stupid for shooting. I've heard some people say that, I, yeah, I don't know. I, I'm not convinced it was the wrong decision. I think if I was stopping his takedowns consistently throughout the fight and then I decided to shoot, it's bad. But because he was taking me down, I didn't want to be in a position where I lost because he, I guess, he did something well. It's, I, I don't know how to describe it. Just, mm. I just need to be in a position where I can, I can shoot there, and I have the ability to take him down and then beat the scramble. And I'm not scared of exchanging with somebody like Pantoja on the ground. So I need to improve. Is how I'm looking at it. Yeah, no, it's definitely a, a tough balance, as you said, trying to kind of assert yourself and, and get the judges' attention, but potentially letting your opponent do something and get ground control. But but definitely, um, as you said, something to learn from. And, and of course, I mean, you were on a pretty long undefeated streak. It's your first loss since 2017 before you were well on the UFC. Just curious kind of how you've handled that mentally. Um, and if you think there's any extra intensity in camp, knowing that you want to get back on the winning side of things. Uh, there's definitely a greater intensity just fighting the UFC in general because the people you're looking at to fight are better everywhere than the guys that you were fighting. So uh, there's a little bit more, you're a little bit harder on yourself when things don't go well. Um, there's a little bit uh, more urgency to get and improve things. And then as far as like losing the last fight, I've definitely been training very hard uh, to put myself in a position that I can win this fight and work myself back to the title. Absolutely. And and of course, you fought two times in three months, which is pretty unheard of for, for most guys in the UFC, even the upper echelons, maybe like an Alex Pereira is one of the few guys that's that's doing something like that. So how do you think this this time off has kind of allowed you to maybe heal um, or at the same time has has kind of given you, you think, an advantage going to this fight? I don't think it gives me an advantage. I don't, yeah, I don't know. It just, I, I don't know. It's, uh, it's a hard one to answer. I understand how giving your body time to rest and that sort of thing is good. But at the same time, it's like we train all our lives to compete. So why would I say no to short notice opportunities or um, quick turnarounds and stuff like that? Like that's how I get paid. That's what I like to do. I like to get into a cage with another man and find out who's tougher. So why would I go, oh, no, I need six months every time because I need a full camp. I'm always training. Who cares? Yeah, no, that's an answer that I think a lot of UFC fans would, would especially enjoy hearing in a sport where some of the top guys across divisions definitely take a long time. So kind of a fresh, fresh of fresh air in that sense. Uh, and of course, against Pantoja, you went one of six in takedown attempts. Kind of how do you think looking at that number um, that will kind of affect your fighting strategy moving forward? And in and, and what ways do you think you might focus on trying to improve that clip against Kai? I think mostly it's about the setups. Uh, my setups were poor earlier in the fight. Um, 
and that made it easy for Panto to defend. So ensuring, like later on, I was timing his take uh, his offense to, t- to use my takedowns. I know I didn't get credit for the second takedown because he ended up reversing it, but the timing on that was really good as well. Um, he just ended up beating me in the scramble, but setups are important, and I haven't been setting him up super well, but. I'm also going in there against top 15 guys straight away. I haven't sort of eased in and got to figure things out. So I'm figuring out against the best people and I guarantee that that number will improve. For for sure. And of course, Kai is kind of the opposite of you. You've been super frequent in the octagon. Kai hasn't fought in over a year dealing with some injuries. Uh, In any sense, do you think that gives you some sort of advantage? And, And how do you kind of train for a guy and revisit his past fights, knowing that things could be different that he hasn't been in there in over a year. Yeah, I don't think it necessarily gives me any advantage. He's been doing it for a long time, got plenty of experience. Um, a year is really not that long in the grand scheme of things. So I think he'll be plenty fit, plenty strong, ready to go in there, keen to get back in there. Um, yeah, and as far as like you're looking at past tape and that sort of thing, um, It'll give me a good indication whether it's exactly what I see on the night. It doesn't really matter. I don't go in there having to do a specific game plan and stick to it 100% because things do change. We'll have a rough guide of what we're going to do. And then if something changes on the night, it's like, okay, well, I've seen, I've done thousands and thousands of sparring rounds. I know how to adapt to people. So it's not that big of a, uh, a detriment. Yeah, no, that's definitely a a shrewd point. And of course, you guys are both top seven in the division. Kai also had a chance that the belt was not able to claim it. Do you feel like there are kind of similarities between you guys? You guys are both from the same country and and kind of the same tier of the weight class? Yeah. Yeah, and in what ways do you feel like that that makes it easy to go against somebody (laughs) like him? But in what ways do you think that challenges you? I don't really see why being in a similar spot to somebody would make it easier or harder. I'm just, he's a tough guy. He proved he's a tough guy. We're going to find out who's better on the night. And that's all there is to it. Um, whether he's lost the title or not, who cares? No, that's definitely, definitely a good point there. Um, and again, just revisiting that, that effort against Pantoja, you went five rounds with, with the champ in his own country. What do you think that kind of indicated to the UFC world, especially in a fight where a lot of people did, really did not give you much of a fighting chance going in? Yeah, it showed people that despite the apparent pressure, I'm not going to wilt. And that um, although it looks looked too soon and all that nonsense, it probably wasn't. So. Um, I'm a going to be a contender and then eventually a champion one day. And that's what po- people should take out of that fight. Yeah, no doubt. No doubt about that. And, and definitely a big change in terms of atmosphere. You go from a uh, hostile Brazil crowd to your own native Perth. Just kind of what are you expecting in terms of the crowd support fighting against another Aussie, but also how much is it going to mean to you to be a co-main in your own city? Yeah, it's a dream come true. Um, I think looking at sports, you always, you don't, when you're young, you don't look at going like playing AFL football or NFL or whatever, and you go to your stadium and then you get booed by everybody. That's not what you're like envision. You envisage walking out and then you kick in a goal or something or scoring a try or whatever sport you're looking at. And then you get the roar of the crowd. And um, that's what this is going to be. I'm going to go out there. I'm going to have home crowd, big roar. And then I'm going to go out there, do my job. And then, uh, soak up the atmosphere yeah it's certainly going to be a really really cool scene to see for sure and i think compared to a lot of top mma contenders across any division you're you're a pretty unassuming guy not super active on social media um kind of what's your reaction when you see a lot of these top guys you know conor mcgregor sean o'malley etc speak their mind very openly on social media and how do you think it, it maybe distinguishes you being more of a quiet assassin i mean i think they're doing like they're betraying who they are, right? And that's all I'm doing too. They go out there, they're talking trash and doing all this sort of stuff. And it's super entertaining. I love listening to it. I love watching it. Um, but at the same time, I don't enjoy listening to people that do that, that I, I don't think are genuine when they do it. I think some people talk trash because they think they have to and it's super cringy and uncomfortable and 
it's just not <laughs> enjoyable in any way. Um, and so, yeah, I could go out there and talk trash, do all that sort of stuff. Um, I don't think it's necessarily me. And I do want to give off a good example to the younger generation of which I am constantly around based on my job in the in the gym I teach martial arts to kids and to start swearing at people and calling them all these different names and then have to go to little Billy and say oh yeah but you shouldn't swear I just I don't it doesn't make sense to me so I try to I try to be a good role model for them and yeah I whether I wanted to talk trash or not I don't think it's me too too much yeah, no, definitely a more model example than a lot of fighters can say about themselves on, on the internet, for sure. Uh, and another big part kind of, of of your MMA persona, I would say, is the, the you know the office and, and the Steve Carell lookalikes. Uh, in what ways would you say you kind of embrace that? And are you big are you a big fan of the show? Like, how does that play into kind of you think your perception among UFC fans? Yeah, I mean, I think the show is amazing. I think it's very funny. I do see the. Uh... I do see the comparisons between uh, myself and Steve Carell. And yeah, I like to have a joke. I love to, if it's my expense to other people, I don't really care. I think humor is humor. And um, yes, all the memes that are going around are quite funny. And um, if I can embrace that and take something from that, it's, uh, it's awesome. Oh, super super cool uh, to see that you're you know you read the memes and i think a lot of guys might stray away from that but but sounds like you're the opposite so very neat there and of course we talked earlier about and you mentioned wanting to get back to the title and eventually claim it um you know obviously you can't overlook a guy like kai but do you see a rematch with pantosia down the line what do you think that path looks like to being the, the champ i hope i get to fight pantosia but the division is looking pretty stacked at the moment so there's every opportunity for somebody to come in there and steal it uh, before I get there. Um, but Pantoja is very slick on the ground. He has a good chin. There's a lot of things that make him a dangerous fighter for a lot of people. So I think likely, yeah, I beat Kai. I have to fight once or twice more to get a title shot again. And in terms of the timing of that, I mean, you're fighting it in kind of middle of August. It might be a quick turnaround for the end of the year. Do you still want to fight one more time in 2024? Or what do you think could be next for you after this upcoming fight? Yeah, I want to get fights. So uh, we'll talk to the UFC after this one and see what they want to do. And in terms of an opponent, whether it's Pantoja or not, I mean, some of the other guys that's off the division, uh, Roy Vall, Moreno, um, Albazi, kind of when you hear those names, what makes them appealing as opponents? And are they guys you would want to fight? Yes, the guys I want to fight. I've told people this as many times I've asked. I want to be the toughest guy in the division, not just the champion, right? Like champion is the main goal, but it means nothing if you dodged everybody and all that nonsense. So I want to be, when people look at the flyweight division, they're like, oh, Steve's undoubtedly the best fighter in that division. There's not, oh, but Amir Albazi could, no, none of that crap. I've beaten them all. I'm the guy. That's I want to fight everybody and prove that. Absolutely. And I guess one last one for you, Steve, you know, a lot of UC fans, as I mentioned, weren't necessarily super familiar with, with your talent going into the Pantoja fight. Now I mean, in a co-main event, do you feel like you're more well-known, but also kind of what do you want to prove in this opportunity coming up in Perth? Yeah, I'm slowly getting more well-known. I think uh, more time in the UFC will uh, increase that, um, increase that just naturally. But what do I want to prove? I want to prove that I'm the best, I guess. That's all I want to prove. That's all I've ever wanted to prove.